The Matrix provides a flexible and different way of capturing musical ideas. There are many possible uses for the Matrix and this video will show you the basics of how to use it. Using it you can trigger audio clips or MIDI patterns using either the mouse, a computer keyboard or a controller. MIDI can be output directly to soft synths in the synth rack or to a MIDI track. This allows the data to be routed via the MIDI effects bin, then to the track's synth, which means the matrix can now be used with hardware synths. I have a simple project here with TTS1 inserted for MIDI pattern playback, currently loaded with a bass guitar sound, a few other MIDI tracks, two routed to a hardware synth, one on a channel with an acoustic guitar sound and the other a lead sound, another MIDI track on a channel going to a hardware drum machine, and it's also an audio track for audio playback. All are named appropriately. So let's open the matrix view by pressing Alt plus 5. If we look at the main pane, you can see it's a grid layout consisting of cells arranged in rows and columns. Cells can either be empty or contain MIDI or audio clips, step sequencer patterns, or Project 5 patterns. These cells, rows, and columns are closely linked with regards to how they interact with each other. So let's take a closer look at the cells. A cell is a placeholder for clips. So let's open the media browser and drag a clip in. There's a couple of things to notice. First, a track is designated as soon as a clip is inserted into the row, and this defaults to the first track of that data type. If a track does not already exist in the project, one will be automatically created. What you see here is dependent on the data type in the row, as a row can only support one type of data, either MIDI or audio, and that's established when the first clip is dragged into the row. In this case, it's an audio clip, so the row has defaulted to audio track one, which is the only audio track in this project. But now if I drag in a MIDI clip, you'll see that the row defaults to the first MIDI track. As this is a drum pattern and the first track is a lead sound, I need to change the output to something more suitable. Just click on the arrow to reveal a drop down of choices and I'm going to select drum hardware. Okay, now we have a couple of clips in the cells, we can see the cell controls. For now, all settings are the defaults, I will look at those in the various options once I've explained the basics. We click on a cell to start it playing back. The play indicator lights when the cell is playing, and a progress indicator around the outside of that shows how far through the loop playback currently is. Note that this has not started the transport. There's no timeline from left to right in this view, as there are most of the other views. You click on a cell to stop it. Navigating around the cells can be done via the keyboard arrow keys. Pressing enter will trigger the current in focus cell and delete will clear it. I'll insert another couple of clips so there's more than one column and more than one clip in one of the rows. I'll change this to the acoustic guitar track. Click dragging a clip will move the clip to a new cell, while Control and click dragging on a clip will copy it to a cell. Only one cell in a row can be played at a time. Starting another in the same row will stop the current one from playing. Notice that when you click on a cell and it doesn't start playing straight away, it flashes to indicate it's queued up ready for playback. Clicking on a column header will play all cells in that column, and clicking on a second column starts that column playing and stops the current one. Click on a playing column again will stop playback. Notice again that the column flashes when it's queued for playback. Individual cells or whole columns can be triggered in any order we wish, but remember that only one cell in any one row can play at a time. In addition to dragging clips into a cell, it's also possible to right click on a cell and import a file via the context menu. Although it's probably easier and quicker to use the browser because you can preview the files much easier there.
Notice that's actually previewing back through TTS-1 as a piano sound. We can drag that in. Now I need to assign this to the Cakewalk TTS-1, which has a bass sound set on its second channel. Let's hear how that goes. As you can hear, that's now playing as a bass sound. So you can see there's a lot of names flying around here now, and some of them are pretty abstract. But it's possible to rename a cell. Just right click on it and select the rename option. Also from the right click context menu, there are options to clear the cell, turn it into a one shot trigger. That means a clip will only ever play through once, overriding any of the global settings. MIDI Learn will put the cell into learn mode, signified by a highlight around the cell. The next MIDI message received, such as a button on a controller being pressed, will be assigned as a cell trigger. You can see the icon in the top left corner, showing that's now been assigned to one of my controllers, and I can trigger it by pressing a button on the controller. MIDI Clear from the right hand click menu will clear any assigned triggers. Now let's look at the row setup in more detail. We've looked at row assignment already, and as well as being able to select that, we can also mute or solo the row here. In addition, if a soft synth is present on the track, clicking on the D button will send data directly to the synth on channel 1, bypassing the track and overriding any channel designations or MIDI effects that may be inserted on the track. You can hear the difference here as the track is set to play channel 2 of the TTS-1, which has a bass patch on it. Channel 1 is a piano sound. That's via the channel assignment. Clicking the D puts it direct to the synth. So you can hear the difference there. We've already mentioned columns. The column is created as soon as the cell is inserted and there's no limit to the number of columns that can be used. Right clicking on the column header will allow us to rename the column. By default, there is no name, it's just a number. Insert column will insert a new blank column to the left of the current one. Duplicate column creates a second copy of it, including any filled cells. MIDI Learn places the column header into Learn mode. Similar to the cell, it will highlight and wait for you to press a button on your controller. Once a column has a controller assigned to it, MIDI Learn will display a small MIDI icon connection in the top right hand corner. Now that controller can be used to trigger that column. Clear MIDI Learn will clear any learns that are on there already. Now we've seen the basics, let's look at some of the options available. You'll have noticed that I've been clicking on the cells, they've been waiting until the next measure before starting to play. This is why the clip has been flashing, indicating it's queued. This is known as a trigger resolution and can be changed along with several other settings. So let's have a look at those. Most of the settings can be adjusted via the toolbar, which is at the top of the view. So let's look at this from left to right. The first button stops all cells from sounding and also provides access to a drop down where we can clear all cells and clear all MIDI learns from cells. The Capture Performance button will record a performance into the row's assigned track in the clips pane. There's no need to arm tracks. This button automatically arms the tracks being used in the matrix for you. We'll be looking at this later. The Follow Transport button when active will lock the matrix view to the project's transport controls. Any cell or row that are triggered will not start to play until the project transport is rolling. Triggered cells while waiting for the transport will flash to indicate they are triggered but waiting. With this button inactive, it's possible to play the cells and rows while the project transport is idle. That's how we've been using it now. The next button labelled A and currently showing measure is the global trigger resolution. Click on the drop down to select what you want to set that to. The choices are immediate, which means that the cell will start playing as soon as you click on it. Measure, which is the default. The cell will wait until the next measure arrives before it starts to play. And the other options beat 8th, 16th, 32nd and 64th work in a similar fashion, but they start at those time resolutions. It's also possible now to set individual trigger resolutions for each cell. That's set on the cell's right click menu and we'll look at that shortly. This is the global loop button and it's currently on. That means the clips will continue to play indefinitely until they are stopped. If you disable this option, all clips will play once and then stop. 
Again, it's possible to set these per cell and we'll look at that shortly. Global latch mode is also on by default. Latch mode decides how a cell will behave when you release the trigger mechanism, which may be releasing the mouse button or taking your finger off a key on the keyboard. When latch mode is on, triggered cells continue to play after the key is released. Retrigger mode sets how a cell or column behaves when triggered if it's already playing. If retrigger is off, clicking on a cell or column will stop the playback. If it's on, the cells will trigger again from the start of the clip. The cell start toggle changes the behaviour of where the clip starts to play when triggered. When on, the clip will always start from the beginning. When off, it will sync to the project, taking into account the trigger resolution. The alternate function for any of these buttons can be used by holding down the ALT key by triggering the cell. Across to the far right, we have the cell MIDI trigger button, and this disables or enables cell triggering from a MIDI device. The drop down allows you to choose whether the matrix responds to all channels, using Omni or a specific channel number. Towards the far right is the options icon, which leads us to these three options. Empty cells stop active cells when triggered, is disabled by default, so clicking on a cell will have no effect. Turning it on as I have will stop cells playing back. When auto scroll to column when triggered by MIDI is enabled, triggering a cell with a controller will automatically scroll the matrix view to that column if that column's out of view. Import all audio's groove clips will automatically force audio clips into groove clips. As well as these global settings, they can be overridden using the individual settings on each clip. We have two icons per cell. The first one on the left is the loop mode. Next to that is the latch mode. The trigger resolution is set from the right click menu as either follow global or has the same choices as the global resolution. This means that each cell can have an individual trigger resolution set. For example, I can set this to 8th, and that will now trigger on 8th while the rest are on global. I could just as easily change this one to a beat, and that triggers at a beat. To set them back to global, just set the trigger resolution to follow global again. These controls use a color system to indicate their state. While they are on and blue, they are following the global setting. If the icon graphic is a gold colour, it indicates that the clip is following its own settings. Note that that might be the same as a global setting, but it will not respond to any global changes that you make. To reset a clip to follow the global setting, you need to control click on it. This cell is now on one shot. Clicking it again changes it to loop mode, which is the same as global, but this cell won't respond to the global settings. To reset it to global setting, you need to control click on it. Once it's back to blue, it's now following the global settings again. The latch mode follows the same principle. When it's blue, it's following global settings. When the graphic is gold, it's following its own setting, which may or may not be the same as the global settings. And to get it back to the global settings, we just need to control click on it again. Using a combination of global and per clip settings, we have full control over the way that the matrix works. Okay, I've loaded up a few more cells, and now they're loaded, I can record a performance of its use and it allows us to use it as a composition tool or to trigger various samples or patterns at set points within an existing project. To record a performance, we need to click on the Catch a Performance button and then turn on the Follow Transport button. I can now click in the first cell or column that I want to play and it will flash to show that it's waiting for the transport to start. Clicking on the play button will start the transport and therefore the recording process. We'll see as the various columns and cells are clicked, all of the output is recorded and once finished can be edited and processed in exactly the same way as any other project. So let's see that in action.
clicking on the stop stops the performance being recorded. Now we can switch back to the track view. That'll now play back in exactly the same way it's recorded. And that's a very brief tour of the Matrix view.